I thought I'd relate one little story that's quite unremarkable that probably a lot of people have experienced, but it sticks out in my mind because it illustrates one of the things I love most of all about backcountry camping. Now, there's all sorts of uh, reasons why we enjoy camping, depressurizing and getting away from the rat race to forget about schedules and clock time, and slowing down and living by sunlight time and immersing yourself in the beauty of nature. Um, uh, but the experience that matters most to me when I'm backcountry camping, which makes me want to go camping out again, is something else entirely. It has to do with exercising ingenuity and resourcefulness through problem solving and troubleshooting minor problems when you're out there. Now, I know that sounds kind of eggheaded, but um, unlike problem solving and troubleshooting in a modern home or in the workplace, these are problems that have to do with our basic material animal needs. And it includes everything from finding a dry spot to sit when you're hiking on a wet day to finding a flat spot where you can pitch your tent, working out the best place to string your tarp, fashioning a simple latrine, locating and purifying a source of water, and uh, you have to secure your food against porous critters. You have to you have to navigate, you have to find your way around on foot or by canoe. And then there's considerations like basic hygiene. You have to clean yourself, you have to clean your clothes, you have to do dishes. Um, there are skills that you want to acquire, like not tying and becoming proficient in fire making. And then there are just coping skills that you need. You have to learn how to cope with bad weather, and cope with mosquitoes, and that sort of thing. Now, to someone who doesn't camp, this can sound like a list of hardships. But there's something very gratifying about solving and addressing all of these very, <clears throat> all these very minor concerns using only the bit of gear you carried yourself. When you're out there, you can't obviously run out to the store and get what you need or borrow something from a neighbor. You have to be satisfied and make do with what you brought. So you're forced to press into service what you brought with you in novel ways and to learn new ways of doing things right there on the spot. And here's my example. A few years ago, my wife and I went on a short three-day canoe trip. And I was carrying the canoe from my vehicle to the water's edge at the start of the trip. And the carrying thwart or the center thwart or the yoke of the canoe broke beyond repair. It snapped at the gunwale and the canoe fell on my head and then the rest of the yoke snapped in half over the back of my neck, uh, bruised my head, bruised my neck, uh, bruised my shoulder, and I had no canoe yoke. Um, and this is going to make the portaging the canoe very difficult. But we weren't about to go home. We just arrived. So we set out in the rain on that September morning and did our best to portage the canoe without a center thwart. My wife and I, she took the front end, I took the back end and sort of struggled that way with it. Um, when we arrived at our first camping site, I knew I didn't want to have to continue without a carrying yoke know, because it was just a nuisance. Um, so after we were well settled in the camp, I set about fashioning a carrying yoke know, using what I had on me and around me. Um, I found a piece of a fallen maple. I broke out my camping saw and my hatchet and began cutting and splitting and carving the wood into a crude fort. Very crude. Uh, and I used my Leatherman multi-tool to remove and straighten the bent bolts from the gunnels. And with the awl on my wife's Swiss Army knife, I bored two holes in each end of the roughly hewn uh, yoke. And I was able to reattach it uh, with the bolts that I'd straightened out. Now, the result wasn't pretty, uh, but it was strong and it was flexible. And once I'd reattached the foam padding from the broken yoke with some duct tape, that I always carry when I'm camping. It was perfectly serviceable as a carrying yoke. It worked so well, in fact, um, that I used that makeshift yoke for the next two months of camping and fishing and such. And I didn't replace it with a more comfortable store-bought yoke until the following spring. Camping is always like that. You're always tackling minor problems with what you have on hand. Ordinarily, most of our basic animal needs and creature comforts are already permanently addressed in the home or just a store trip away. 
So we don't have to give them much thought. But in the bush, those considerations are never far from your thoughts. And that puts you in the moment. There's a sense of immediacy to, to living in the bush. You don't feel distant or removed or divorced from what you're doing. Your mind is seldom thinking about something else while you're performing a task. Your mind is fully engaged, trained on what you're doing. And it makes you feel very alive and very involved when you're in a situation where you're responsible moment by moment for your own safety, your own creature comforts, and your enjoyment. And you don't get bored. <laughs> There's always plenty to do and more you could do. This constant uh, in-the-moment experience that comes from minor problem solving and exercising your creativity and applying your ingenuity uh, it's kind of empowering too. Um, after your first night in the bush, you realize, hey, I'm, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere and I'm fine. Despite the good or the bad weather and the difficult hike or the long portage or the, the hard paddle across a windy lake or some minor discomforts and inconveniences along the way that inevitably happen, I'm fine. I'm not lost. I'm safe. I'm clothed, I'm dry, I'm sheltered, I'm well fed, I'm well hydrated and well rested, and I did this myself using only the gear I carried in. Uh, making do with what you have in this way, uh, with whatever's around you, what you brought with you, it expands your sense of your own capabilities and it helps counter that creeping sense of having grown soft and dependent comes from living in our modern world with material conveniences and labor-saving devices. And that feeling, that, that sense of immediacy and being in the moment, it's a high and it, it doesn't evaporate the moment you break camp and hike out and get back to your car for the drive home. It, it lingers, it stays with you. It wears off, I find, solely over the course of days, uh, especially if you've been out there for several nights. Uh, I, I find that often on the long drive home from a camping trip, I'm so accustomed now to the quiet and the slower pace and being alone with my thoughts that it doesn't even occur to me to turn on the radio to find out what's going on. Or you know, I've, I've broken the habit of seeking out those external distractions the way I do when I'm at home, when I've been away from the outdoors for too long. That feeling of being in the moment, present, engaged, undistracted, and by having applied my mind and skills to provide for my most basic animal material needs, especially in a place I've never been before, that I'm camping in for the very first time, that for me is one of the most deeply satisfying and rewarding experiences that I get from backcountry camp.